In this video, we're comparing the top brands of 2 meter long active Thunderbolt 3 cables from Amazon and finding the best brand of cable. The longest Thunderbolt 3 cables that still maintain full speed are only up to 0.8 meters long or 2.5 feet. That's unless you get an active cable, in which case they go up to 2 meters or 6 feet. We'll be looking at a variety of categories and stress testing the cables for speed. If you're interested in just performance, that section will be at the beginning of the video after the intro in case you're interested in results only. At the end of this experiment, I'll be making my recommendation for the best cable after taking in all of the factors. You'd be surprised, the most expensive option at $80 was actually one of the worst performers. If you're interested in the explanation as to why you need an active Thunderbolt cable, why active matters, and what that even means, I'll include that at the end of the video. Let's get started. To cover most if not all of the popular options, I bought the cables that had the highest numbers of reviews and highest ratings. A few days later, we have the standard Apple cable, Nectec, Cable Matters, Mantis, Trebly, StarTech, and Belkin. The Apple cable is the only short cable, and the Trebly is a non-active cable at only 20 gigabits per second to see if it's even worth getting a more expensive active cable. We'll be comparing the cables in terms of performance, connection stress tests, i.e. the wobble test, packaging and cable quality, reviews, price, and finally results. For our tests, we're using the most intensive stress test which is using an external graphics card over Thunderbolt 3. More specifically, we're using AMD's RX 580 connected to a 2019 iMac 5K. We've disconnected all other external peripherals, except for monitor connected to the external graphics card, since by keeping it attached it's still controlling the experiment and it'll help put strain on the Thunderbolt 3 connection. Performance Geekbench is widely regarded as not a completely accurate tool for accurate sustained benchmarks. We can see that in our results where the control cable, Trebly, scored almost the same in terms of peak performance as other cables. The outliers here are Nectech and Belkin, edging out the other cables, but I recommend we check out the next more relevant benchmarks. Luxmark is a sustained benchmark, giving us a more accurate picture in terms of performance. Here higher is better. And we can see that aside from the other cables, the Treblete and Nectec perform the worst, with the Treblete results as expected since it's a slower non-active cable and the Nectec performing not to spec. Let's repeat another sustained benchmark to be thorough. In a Final Cut render test, where lower is better, we can see the 20 gigabit per second cable suffer as expected, with Mantis and Nectec being amongst the top performers and StarTech and Cable Matters not performing as well. For testing the quality of connection, I performed two basic tests and then an inspection. I very scientifically wobbled the iMac a few times with the external graphics card connected to see if the connection issues arose. I wobbled the cable directly by hand, and with the cable plugged in, I moved it around to inspect how much it shifted while in the connector. Nicely, all of the cables passed all wobble tests. I rated each cable from 1 to 5, and as you can see, with the Apple cable at a 4, and ranked cables that felt looser than Apple's below 4. As a result, the Mantis scored above the rest. The connection with the iMac was even better than Apple's connection, rock solid. Cables that felt a bit looser ranked at 3.5, the loosest ranked at a 3. That was the Trebly, whose longer connector made the connections feel less sturdy. The rest performed adequately. None of the cables aside from the passive 20 gigabits per second Trebly cable had connectors that were longer than usual. All of the cables, aside from Belkin, made no sounds when you played with them. The standard Apple cable has solid cable quality, a simple rubber texture, plastic connector housings, and relatively short, regular size connectors. The Trebly had a thick nylon braided design that feels smooth and looks nice. The chamfered connectors look terrific, and the metal connector is just a tad longer on the Trebly, which will make the Trebly stick out just a bit longer. When I connected the Trebly, I noticed it sticks out much longer, on the external graphics card at least, which had me worried, since that might lead to connectivity issues. It also appeared to be a bit wobbly and not super stable, but when I moved the cable around with it and used with the external monitor, it did not disconnect and no fires broke out. For the Mantis, the cable is standard and feels closely to Apple's. The connector housings closely match Apple's as well, but whereas Apple's connector housing is a glossy, smooth plastic, the Mantis feels more like a matte plastic. The metal connector is the same length as Apple's, which should be good for connector stability. The cable itself is a rubber, and it looks a bit sensitive since it came with marks from the provided twist ties. For StarTech.com, it was virtually the same to the Mantis cable. There was rubber cabling with plastic connector housings and the same length metal connector as Apple's. There is a remarkable similarity in the cable overall to the Mantis brand. Cable Matters has a two-piece connector housing. 
Aside from that, the connector is the same length as Apple's and the cabling has a nice rubber feel to it. Same matte plastic as on the other cables. Same thickness as the Apple cable. Nectech was virtually the same as the Cable Matters cable. There's a two-piece connector housing, the same length metal connector, but a rubber cable, matte plastic housing, and a nice feeling. Both the Cable Matters and the Nectech connector housings feel a bit lighter than the other cables. For the Belkin, when it came to quality, Belkin's cable was the only one whose shielding made troubling sounds when the cable was even slightly bent. I did my best to capture this on camera, but it sounds like the shielding is shifting around or rubbing up against itself or otherwise doing not good things. This was confusing because in terms of appearance this cable looks the best, with a resemblance most closely matching Apple's. The connector housing is as long as on the other active cables, and it has that same glossy plastic finish as the Apple Thunderbolt cable. The metal connector is the same length as Apple's. It looks like Belkin was the only company who, unlike the other manufacturers, didn't recycle designs and invested the money in designing their own, since this was the most unique cable of the bunch. Reviews This is based on other customer reviews on Amazon. The non-active treble ranked amongst the highest, followed by the Apple cable, and the rest were around 3.7 stars out of 5, with the exception of Cable Matters' cable which ranked lower. All of the negative complaints shared by all cable reviews were along the lines of graphics not working, cable failure issues down the line, intermittent connection reports, and cable quality issues. I'll update this video in the comments below if I encounter any issues with the cable I chose. Price In terms of price, the treble was the slowest, and also the lowest. Lower is better here. The StarTech.com was the most expensive at nearly $80, followed by the Belkin, and the rest were in acceptable ranges for active cables, around the $50 mark. Results My ultimate recommendation is, drumroll please, the Mantis Thunderbolt 3 active cable. I can wholeheartedly recommend this cable for a variety of reasons. Whereas other cables have performed marginally better within a margin, the Mantis cable has one of the most reliable connections and is competitively priced coming in at a happy medium price point of $49, as opposed to $80 at the upper range for StarTech. And that's all. I unfortunately don't have Thunderbolt 3 devices that charge at the advertised 100 watt specs, but let me know in the comments below if there are any devices you'd like to see me test and I'll make an update to this video at a future time. Stay tuned for the explanation as to why active cables matter versus non-active or passive. But if you were just here for the results, thanks for tuning in, and if you found this video helpful, be sure to leave a like, comment below, and subscribe for new content. Why Thunderbolt 3 cables that are longer than 0.8 meters need to be active. Quoted from Apple Insider, the short cables that come with docks and other peripherals are called passive cables. To keep costs down, these are no-frill cables, and because of it, they run longer than 18 inches and have slower transfer speeds for connected devices. This can cause problems in high bandwidth situations like docks or the LG 5K ultrafine display. Short passive Thunderbolt 3 cables, such as those packed in with docks, are very nearly always fully compatible with USB 3.1 Type-C peripherals, but the length isn't that handy. Thunderbolt 3 runs longer than 18 inches can be passive or active. The passive ones have lower speeds, with max data rate hitting about 20 gigabits per second at 2 meters of cable length. Active cables contain transceivers to regulate the data transfer through the cable. At the same 2 meters, speed is still at the maximum of 40 gigabits per second. Passive cables maintain USB 3.1 Type-C compatibility. Active ones do not, which means if you use them as regular USB-C cables instead of Thunderbolt, they will only work at USB 2.0 speeds. So this solution is pretty specialized to Thunderbolt. There is no correlation between passive or active and maximum wattage. And that's all. Thanks for tuning in, and drop a like if you found this video helpful. Thanks for watching.